Good morning, everyone, and welcome to TWC's virtual worship experience this morning. I'm Pastor Wendell. As you all are coming inside of the room, look, begin liking, sharing, commenting, whole nine yards, because I believe that today's message, today's word, is going to be one that hopefully, prayerfully, will be encouraging to you, will be encouraging to you. Um, as we've been looking at um, a lot of the things that have been happening over the course of these last couple of weeks with with Haiti, with Afghanistan, with Kabul, uh, with COVID cases on the rise, I believe that today's message is one that will encourage your soul, will encourage your spirit, and at the end of the day, hopefully will encourage you to keep moving, to keep going, to keep pressing, to keep pursuing. We are finalizing today the series that we've been doing over this last month entitled Morning Dew, Morning Dew. One of the things that we've been doing this side of the month of August, we've been getting up early on Sunday mornings uh, between 6 and 7 a.m., just to meet God, just to meet God in prayer, to meet God in fellowship, um, to meet God in study. And I've just been really, really enjoying, enjoying these last couple of weeks with you all. And I encourage you all to continue. Please continue to do this um, as often as you can. I believe that next week we are going to go back to our 10 a.m. virtual experience. So make sure that you set your notifications that you subscribe, uh, that you are aware when we do go live uh, as it relates to the word of God. Today, I'm very, um, I'm very excited. We're going to we're going to pray and then jump right inside of the word. But I really am excited about concluding this series because one of the things that we have learned over these last couple of weeks is really what the do represents for us as people. We've seen that the do represents provision that the do represents grace, that the do represents the fact that God loves us, even in the midst of whatever it is that we are going through, even in the midst of whatever it is that is challenging us, that is ailing us, that when we see the do in the morning, it reminds us that God's provision, that God is always working on our behalf. So I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going straight to the book of Psalm, the book of Psalms. Uh, the 30th chapter and the fifth verse, which is actually one of my favorite verses, is probably a verse that you've heard a million times over. But we're going to look at it today in the context of the dew. And just the fact the dew arrives in the morning. Watch this. I mean, it might be pre uh, uh, uh spo spoiler alert, but the fact that the dew arrives in the morning time lets us know that God is working things out inside of our midnight hour, inside of our darkest hour. So let me pray. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for this opportunity of gathering and sharing. We ask, oh God, that you would now enter inside of our place, oh God. And we thank you, oh God, for always dwelling with us. So now, oh God, open up our hearts, our ears, and our minds to receive that that you would have us to receive on this morning. Allow, oh God, the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart to always be acceptable in your sight. God, be our strength and our redeemer. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Look, the book of Psalms, the 30th chapter and the fifth verse says this. Reading from the New Living Translation, it says, For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. I want y'all to do me a favor, put down inside of the comments, find the emoji of the sun, because we're really going to talk today about joy. And as I was doing my, my research, my final little bit of research on dew and the morning dew, one of the interesting things when dew forms, okay, when dew forms before it hits the grass, before it hits the vegetation, before it hits the ground, dew forms in the lowest temperature of the morning. Dew forms in the lowest temperature of the morning. I was thinking about it, and what God dropped inside of my spirit is that there are some things inside of our lives that we are just on the precipice of a breakthrough. We are just on the brink of something great. We are just on the brink of something amazing. We are just on the brink of our blessing, but we don't always feel like we are. Watch this, because we're inside of our lowest moment. 
We don't always feel like we are because we might be experiencing a job loss. We don't always feel like we are because we just got a health diagnosis. We don't always feel like we are because our relationship is in turmoil or we might be ready to go through a divorce. We don't always feel like we are because our bank account is, 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 is a little bit low. At the end of the day, one of the things that I've realized is that it is oftentimes at our lowest and darkest moment that God provides, that God does something great, that God does something amazing. It is typically at our lowest and darkest and most hopeless moments. The moment that you don't believe that God is even in your neighborhood. The moment that you don't believe that God even cares about you. The moment that you don't even believe that God has your best interests at heart, that is the moment, watch this, that is the moment that God is literally working to produce exactly what you need for your morning. Look what the text says inside of verse five, it says, for his anger lasts only a moment. Now, when I thought about that, in retrospect to morning dew, and I was thinking, you know, as David is writing this psalm, and this is a song of dedication to the temple. They're actually de de dedicating the, um, the temple to the people. They're pretty much doing a church dedication. And I began to ask, why would David write about God's anger only lasting for a moment? And what dropped inside of my spirit was this. So often when we are going through something bad, so often when we are going through turmoil or stress or drama or obstacles inside of our lives. One of the first things that we think, one of the first things that we assume is that God is angry with us. Who am I talking to this morning? One of the first things that we assume is that God is upset with us. One of the first things that we assume is that we have done something in order to make God do something bad to us. But I want to encourage somebody this morning that some of the trials that you are going through, some of the stresses that you are experiencing, some of the things that, that you might be pushing your way through inside of this consciousness called life, it's not because God is angry with you, okay? It's not because God is upset with you. See, we don't serve the kind of God where we do something bad and then God does something bad to us. We don't serve the type of God where we disappoint God and then God does something out of his feelings, out of his emotions. See, we don't, we don't have, we don't serve the type of God who is in his feelings like we oftentimes find ourselves inside of our feelings. Who am I talking to? See, because if somebody does us wrong, we automatically want to do them wrong. If somebody cuts us off in the street, what do we want to do? You swing around and cut them off. Somebody cheats on us in a relationship, we want to do what? Go out and cheat on them in a relationship. See, no, no, no. We don't serve the type of, we don't serve a vindictive type of God whose anger lasts forever. God is not upset with you. I don't know who needs to hear this this morning. God is not upset with you about what you did five years ago. God is not upset with you about the mistake that you made a year ago. Watch this. God is not even upset with you about the sins and the things that you committed on yesterday. The Bible declares that God's anger only lasts for a moment. In other words, when we do something wrong, I don't know who needs to hear it this morning. When we do something wrong, when we do something to upset God, when we do something to make God mad, when we do something that disappoints God, when we do something that makes God shake his head, when we do something that makes God bow his head in disappointment to us. See, here's the thing. When we do that to God, God literally sees it. He might get angry. But he, the Bible declares that he only gets upset for a moment. Why? Because after God gets upset, grace and mercy step in. God's love steps in. And God says that although you might have done wrong, although you might have made a mistake, although you might have disappointed me, I am not going to stay angry with you forever. I am going to forgive you because I realize, watch this, that in forgiving you beyond your wrong, be giving you for forgiving you 
beyond your mistake. Forgiving you beyond the disappointment is going to show you how much I love you. See, one of the things, I don't know who needs to hear it this morning, but so often do we mess up relationships. So often do we have messiness in the family. So often do we have messiness with our partners and with our spouses because we want to stay angry for weeks at a time. Who am I talking to this morning? We want to stay angry for years. There are people that there are people that you might be angry with who did stuff to you 5, 10, 15 years ago. They sitting down right now having a cup of coffee, smiling, um, watching CNN, and you still upset. See, we don't serve the type of God that acts inside of such a way. No, we serve the kind of God where when we do something, God's grace and mercy and God's love steps in, forgives, and then restores us. See, because that's really what it's all about. It's all about God restoring us even after we've fallen. God restoring us even after we made the mistake. God restoring us even after we got in the mess. See, at the end of the day, the Bible declares... For his anger lasts only a moment. I am so glad that God's grace, God's mercy, God's love steps in when I mess up. That God's grace, God's mercy, God's love steps in when I do wrong. That God's mercy, God's grace, God's love steps in when I sin. Because there are some things that I have done and there are some things that you have done. Where truth be told, God should still be angry with us. God should still be upset with us. God should still be shaking his head. But I serve the kind of God that will not stay angry with me forever, but is concerned about my well-being and is concerned about my restoration and will not stay angry with me, but only for a moment. Look at what it says. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. The second thing inside of the text David says his anger lasts a moment and his favor lasts a lifetime. I want you to put inside of the comments. God's favor is forever. God's favor is forever. And I have seen this in my life. I have seen this in my personal journey. I have seen this in my family. I have seen this in our finances. I have seen I have seen God's favor. See, when the favor of God is on your life, the Bible declares that it lasts a lifetime, that it lasts forever. And if you can tap into God's favor, see, what is favor? Favor says, and I, I realized this having three children, okay? And coming from a, a household where there was multiples of us, you really don't see it or you probably can't really see it if you grew up inside of a inside of a single child home because that one child automatically gets all the favor that one child automatically gets all the attention but now being a father of three i do see where we favor not to say favor but y'all will get the illustration where we favor or will do for one child a little bit more than the other. I'm going to tell y'all a really, really quick, a really, really quick story. When we went to Myrtle Beach a couple of weeks ago, we was ready to pull off. I was trying to get to an exit to give the kids something to eat and was trying to um, trying to find a good McDonald's or a good spot. And Jonah, my son, the middle boy, you know, he started getting fussy. He started, you know, started um uh, crying, whining a little bit because he was hungry. He was ready to get out of the car. And I was like, Jojo, you know, he's only one. I was like, look, just, you know, just give me a couple minutes. We're almost at the exit. You know, just give me about 10, 15 more minutes. I was trying to get to a specific destination. And, you know, of course he was getting fussy. Of course he was getting whining. And I was like, okay, just let me, let me get, you know, 10, 15 more minutes in, 10, 15 more minutes in. But Charlotte, who's my first child and my um, and my oldest daughter, she looked at me. Now, Jojo had already been, you know, kind of fussy for about five, you know, about, about five minutes. She looked at me and I looked inside the, inside the rear view, went uh, inside the rear view um, uh, mirror. And she said, Daddy. I said, yes, Charlie. She said, I'm hungry. I said, you are, baby. And then this one little tear came out her eye. I lied to you all not. I got off on the very next exit 
And my wife laughed at me. Vanna laughed at me because she was like, poor Jonah. Like he'd been back there just, you know, just crying and, and whining and ready. But daddy's baby girl, as soon as she says she wants something, she going to get it. See, here's the thing. At the end of the day, and I say that in all humor, because at the end of the day, when you tap into God's favor, no one understand that you are God's favorite and that God will do any and everything possible to make sure that you are happy, to make sure that you are cared for, to make sure that you are provided for, to make sure that your health is in good order. Who believes? I don't know who believes it this morning. Who believes that you are God's favorite because you have seen the favor of God in your life. You have seen the favor of God in your finances. You have seen the favor of God in that academic pursuit where you know that you did not deserve that grade inside of that class, but God favored you with the professor. You already know that you did not deserve or even have the qualifications to get that job, but God favored you inside of the hiring manager's eyes. Who am I talking to? You have to realize that when you step into the favor of God, when you step into the grace of God, when you step into the good graces of God, that the favor of God lasts a lifetime. See, we don't serve the kind of God. I don't know who needs to hear this morning. But we don't serve the kind of God that is just going to go, that is just going to show favor in your life one time. We don't serve the kind of God that is just going to heal your body one time. We don't serve the kind of God who is just going to uh, pay your bills and make sure that you're provided for one time. We don't serve the kind of God that is going to make sure that you experience unconditional love inside of your relationship one time. We don't serve the kind of God where you pray and you ask for something and you give God the desires of your heart and he's only going to give you the desires of your heart one time. I want you to put inside the comments, I don't serve a one time God. I serve a God that is going to stick with me for a lifetime. And I've said it, I've said it before that if God can do it before, then God can do it now. And I'm believing that God can do it again. See, when I step into the favor of God and I realize that I am one of God's favorite children, when I realize that I am a child of God, when I realize that I am a king's kid, then the favor of God that followed me when I was five, that followed me when I was 10, that followed me when I was 20, that followed me when I was in college, that followed me in the early parts of my marriage, that followed me inside of the early parts of my career, that followed me inside of the early parts of my health. If I found favor on yesterday, then I'm believing that God is going to give me favor on this morning. That's what the do really represents, the favor of God, because not every area, watch this, not every region, not every bit of vegetation gets due. If you were to look outside right now, as I realized this yesterday when I got up, right before the landscapers came, I realized that there were some blades of grass that had dew on it and some blades of grass that did not have dew on it. I also realized that the dew had grass on it, but the bushes did not have grass on it. And I don't know who needs to hear it this morning, but God is ready to pour his dew in your life. God is ready to pour his blessings in your life because you are favored by God. People won't even understand. Who am I talking to this morning? People won't even understand why you have what you have. People won't understand how you got what you got. People won't understand how you made a way out of that dismal situation. People won't understand how you got out of that, uh, how you got out of that breakup or that relationship and you still have joy in the morning. People won't understand how in the world you were able to go from point A to point B. People won't understand how you were able to buy that house. People won't understand how you were able to buy that car. People won't understand how you were able to get that job. And the only thing that you can say that it was no qualification of my own, who am I preaching to this morning? But it was the favor of God that was on my life, that was able to provide, that was able to sustain, and that was able to make a way out of no way. Look at what the text says. I feel like I'm preaching this morning. It says, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night. The King James Version says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. 
the title of today's message, as you can see inside of the cat inside of the caption, is from morning to morning. From morning, M-O-U-R, N I N G, to morning, M-O-R, N I N G. And as I was typing that, literally, I, it did not happen until this morning as I was typing it inside of the caption, I realized that the difference between morning and morning, as far as the spelling, is one letter, and it's the letter U. And I began to think, and what God dropped in my spirit this morning was, Wendell, the only thing that will get you from morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, to morning, M-O-R-N-I-N-G, is to remove you. I don't know who needs to hear this this morning, but the reason why you still might be stressed, the reason why you might still be in angst, the reason why you might still have those obstacles, the reason why you might still find yourself crying in the middle of the night is because you have yet to remove you out of the situation and place God in the situation. Because the word of the Lord declares that weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. And I don't know who needs to hear this on this morning, but you have cried long enough. You have suffered long enough. You have travailed long enough. You have gone through long enough. You have, you have been beaten up long enough. The Bible declares that although you might be inside of your lowest part at night, Although you might feel as though you are inside of your lowest part in your relationship, you might feel as though that you are in the lowest part of your finances. You might feel as though your health is at its lowest part. You might feel as though your career is at its lowest part. But I came to declare over your life on this morning that although you might be inside of your lowest A, B, C, D, and E, Although you might be inside of or inside of inside of your lowest point, that is the opportunity. That is the place that God wants to form something new. That is the place that God wants to form the do. Because just like I said earlier inside of the sermon, do forms at the lowest temperature of the morning. And God is ready to form something in your life. Y'all, I don't, I don't know who needs to hear it. God is ready to form something in your life where you thought it was dry, where you thought it had no hope, where you thought it just wasn't going to happen, where you thought that you'd and fought and fought and fought and fought and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and that nothing was going to happen. There are sometimes, watch this, there are times in your life when you feel like you were ready to hit rock bottom. But just before you hit rock bottom, God will put a trampoline in the, or as, or as, or as, or as my daughter would say, God will put a trampoline in the bottom of that pit that will bounce you right back out. The word of the Lord declares that weeping may last through the night, but joy comes. Watch this. The text says, but joy comes in the morning. Joy is ready to come in your life. You might not have it in your life right now, but God is ready to bring it to you. You might not have happiness in your life right now, but God is ready to bring it to you. You might not have unconditional love inside of your life right now, but God is ready to bring it to you. You might not have peace inside of your life right now, but God is ready to bring it to you. Who am I preaching to this morning? At the end of the day, joy is going to come in your morning. The dew is ready to show up in your life. The blessing is ready to show up in your life. Life, and I don't care how low you are. I don't care how tired you are. I don't care how beat up you are. You are not so low that God can't reach down, grab you and pick you up and bring you to a place of restoration. Who needed to hear that this morning? You are not so low 
that God is not able to to uh, that God is not able to reach way down inside of the muck, inside of the mire, inside of the clay, inside of the mud, and say, "Look, I don't know who needs to hear it this morning, but I am ready to restore you to a place of joy. I am ready to restore you. Watch this to a place of growth, because what the dew also does in the morning is it provides for the seed. It provides for the vegetation. It provides for the thing in which that dew is upon. And God told me to tell you that after he picks you up, after he restores you, after he gives you the dew, then guess what? God is going to help you grow into new areas, into new things, into new perspectives, into new adventures inside of this thing called life. Let me pray for you. God, we thank you. We thank you, oh God, for your word that never fails us that never gives up on us. God, we thank you, O God, that you have met us here on this morning. We thank you, O God, that you have provided for us in so many ways, in more ways than one, in more ways than we can imagine. And we thank you for that. We thank you, God, for the series that you have taught us about the morning dew and about your provision and about your grace and about your mercy, about your love. And we thank you, God, for choosing us as one of your favorites. Help us to know and understand that, God, you aren't angry with us, that what we're going through is not punishment, but God, you're taking us through this thing for a reason as well as for a season. So help us, oh God, to know that your anger does not last forever, but your favor does. And we are favored by you. We are favored by your grace. We are favored by your mercy. God, there are so many people out here that are weeping. There are so many people out here that are stressed. There are so many people out here that are going through so many different things. And God, we ask inside of this moment that you would give them a peace that passes all understanding, that you give them a joy everlasting, and that you allow us all to realize that although we might be crying inside of this moment, but you are ready to bring joy in our lives. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Look, I want you all to do me a favor. Jump over to our website, twcatl.org. Sow a seed into the vision of this ministry. More importantly, look, inside that button right down there, like this video, share this video. If this word encouraged you this morning, do me a favor, help us be um, a minister and you can be a minister to someone else by simply sharing this message with someone else. Okay. Thank you all so much. This upcoming Friday is first Friday. Really am excited about getting out and serving the homeless community, the homeless population. Um, so make sure that you sow a seed so that we can support, uh, so that you can help support that initiative along with the other initiatives that we do here at TWC. Like I say every week that you give through the church and not to the church. So thank you all so much for helping us to continue our vision and our mission of connecting people back to God and humanity. I will see you all next week. Peace and blessings. <laughs>